The National Broadcasting Company presents Radio City Playhouse, Attraction 15. Ladies and gentlemen, here is your director and your host on Radio City Playhouse, Harry W. Duncan. Thank you, Bob Warren, and good evening, everybody. First of all, on behalf of everyone connected with the show, may we thank you very much for your wonderful letters praising last week's broadcast and welcoming us back to the air. Actually, we received only one complaint from a lady whom we'll call Mrs. X. She wrote... Why must you portray such horrible people? I don't mind listening to Radio City Playhouse, but I'd sure hate to live with anybody who has a mind like yours. Well, Mrs. X, thanks for your letter anyway, and please don't think that you're not going to meet some entirely lovable, kind, good characters on Radio City Playhouse. You are. And in the very near future, so I hope you'll stick with us. Unfortunately, nasty people make good stories. So good, in fact, that we've another one for you tonight, this time by Mr. John Galsworthy. John Stanley plays Keith Darrant. Ian Martin plays Larry Darrant, his brother, in John Galsworthy's The First and the Last, Attraction 15 on Radio City Playhouse. <laughs> o'clock of a November evening in London in the year 1914. The fire in Keith Darrant's study flicks little dapples of light across the turkey red carpet. Mr. Darrant is dozing, but even in sleep his face is strong, cold, clear-cut. Mr. Keith Darrant, K.C. Holly, his butler, tiptoes into the room, stands looking at his master's virile, calm face, then coughs discreetly. Uh, 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 yes, Holly, what is it? It's your brother, sir. Here? Yes, sir. Is he sober? <laughs> he seems so, sir. All right, show him in. Yes, sir. Oh, and Holly, you'd better telephone Judge Tellison and say I may be a few minutes late for dinner. Yes, sir. Come in, Master Larry. Thank you, Holly. Come in, Larry, come in. Hello, Keith. Come over here where I can see you. Sit down. You look dreadful. Have you been drinking? I... Uh, uh, Keith, I... Don't mumble, Larry. If you have anything to say, say it. I suppose you want money. Uh, I... Uh, what uh, is it? I killed a man. You have been drinking. No, 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 it's true. Larry, I have a dinner appointment. Whatever you've got to say, say it. So I tell you. I, I killed a man. Larry. Last night. You're not serious. Yes, I'm serious. What do you want me to do? I've told you, you're my brother. Can't you understand English? How? When? Tell me. When... But there's a girl, you see. She's Polish. She married a man named Wallen. He left her with a baby coming. Ran out on her. She lost the baby and almost starved to death. Then I came along. She's... A... Well, she's not what you'd call respectable. Go on. But, Keith, I've never met a sweeter woman. She's... She's fine and, and good. And... Oh, she's so young. She's only 20. Well, last night when I went to her, Warren was there. He turned up again. We had a row. He was drunk and half mad with rage. He came for me and I... I hit him. I took him by the throat. I... 
Well, when I let go, he was... He was dead. Larry. I never even knew till it was over. That she'd been hanging on to him, too. Then what did you do? We sat by a long time. And then? I carried it down the street to an archway. Did anyone see you? No. What time was this? Three in the morning. Where was the archway? Corner of Love Lane. Then what? I went back to her. Where does she live? 42 Borrow Square, Soho. <sighs> you idiot, don't you realize what this means? You know that I'm within an ace of a judgeship. Help me, Keith. What do you expect me to do, rush out and defend you? For years I've worked and slaved to get where I am. And you smash everything with a fit of insane, mad temper. Keith, help me. I may be no good, but I've never even heard a fly if I could help it. I let a lie like fury. Oh, I'm so afraid I feel sick. Well, pull yourself together. Let me think. You're sure no one saw you? Yes. When you left the girl finally, where did you go? To my room. Fitzroy Street? Yes. What have you done since? Sat there thinking... Can a girl be trusted? She loves me. <laughs> Can a woman like that love? Oh, you lawyer. Sometimes I want to... Answer me. All right. I tell you she's devoted to me. Keith, did, did you ever pick up a lost dog? Well, that's what it's like. She, she has a lost dog's love for me. And I for her. It's been the only decent thing in my life. You can I... spare me the intimate details. Did you take anything from the body? Huh? Oh. Oh, yes, this... This envelope dropped out when we were struggling. Give it to me. Mr. Patrick Wallen, Simons Hotel, Farrier Street, London. <coughs> there. Into the fire. Doesn't that make you... an accessory to the crime or something? Burning it, I mean? I'm quite aware of the risk I'm running. Now, tell me, this Wallen, was this his first reappearance after an absence? Yes. And you say you didn't mean to kill him? No, no, of course I didn't. He, he hit me and I... I... Oh, Keith, I, I didn't know I was so strong. Did you look to see if his clothes were marked? No. Oh, why not? I'm not made of iron like you. How long has the girl been at this Soho place? About a year. Are either she or Wallen known to the police? Not that I know of. And you're sure no one saw you either entering or leaving her place last night? Yes, yes, I'm positive. I keys to her flat. Give them to me. What else have you that connects you with her? Nothing. Photographs, letters. No, no, nothing. Now listen, Larry. Go straight home and stay there until I get in touch with you. All right. Have you any money? A little. I'll get you some tomorrow. You. <laughs> you're very. Good to me, Keith. Don't mention it. The privilege of a brother. As it happens, I'm thinking of myself. You realize you've dragged me into the most unholy mess. Me, King's Counsel, sworn to the service of the law. I know, Keith. I know. Don't you think I know it? I'd like to jump in the Thames or something. Oh, or... stop being melodramatic. Go home and keep your head. Stay there until you hear from me. Holly. Now, remember, keep your head. All right. All right. Good night, Keith. You wanted me, Mr. Darren? Yes. Good night, Larry. Good night, Keith. Oh, my Polly. Good night, Mr. Larry. Has he gone? Yes, sir. Now listen, Holly. Larry's in trouble. You'll find out about it soon enough. Follow him. Make sure he goes straight home. He's overwrought, and if he starts drinking, anything can happen. Follow him. Don't let him do anything but go straight home. Understand? Uh, uh, yes, sir. As soon as we finish dinner, I'll phone you from Judge Tellison's. Very good, sir. You better get after Larry quickly. I'll phone you later. Uh, yes, sir. Mr. Darren's residence. Holly, did he go straight home? Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Darren. You're sure? He went into a chemist's shop. Uh, I didn't think it wise to stop him. Chemist's shop? Yes, sir. I couldn't see what he bought. 
I didn't go in after him. I waited outside and looked through the window. He bought something in a little blue box. Holly, I'm going down to Borrow Square. It's in Soho. I'm leaving Judge Tellison's now. Wait up for me. Yes, Mr. Derrant. <laughs> Startled me, Constable. The fog's so thick I didn't see you. Is this Glove Lane? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, I beg pardon, Governor. I shouldn't be around here too much, sir. If I was you, bad district. Thank you, Constable. Only last night a bloke was found here done in right by this arch. Yes, I read about it in the papers. Yes, some room characters around these parts. Yes. I'm looking for Borrow Square. Uh, straight ahead, sir, and turn to the right. Thank you, Constable. Don't be frightened. I had a dinner engagement or I wouldn't have come so late. Larry's told me everything. It's an awful business. Yes, awful. In this room? Yes. Just where you are standing. I... You look very young to be a... How old are you? I'm 20. Are you fond of Larry? I would die for him. I'm going to try to help. Oh, yes, help us. Please help us. This man, Wallen, your husband, before he came here last night, how long since you saw him? Eighteen months. I was out to dinner with friends who are very close to the courts. They've identified Wallen's body. They'll start looking for everybody connected with him. He, he never let people know I was married to him. I don't know if I really was. We went to an office and signed our names. But I did not understand English very well then. I don't know if we really were married. Well, we can hope not. He treated many like me, I think. You're sure no one around here knows of your connection with him? I'm sure. If the worst comes to the worst and this man is traced to you, can you trust yourself not to give Larry away? I've burned all the things he has given me, even his picture. Good. Since last night, what have you been doing? Crying. I'm so afraid. You haven't been out? No. You're a strange girl. What do you call yourself now? What's Van, your name? Vanda Levinska. One more question. Do the police know you because of your... Uh, your life? No. No, the police do not know me. Good. Well, I'm going now. Don't do anything until you hear from me. Talk to nobody. Don't go out for anything except to buy food. Keep quiet. And don't worry. Not worry? How can I not worry? Well, you can try. Please, sir, do not take Larry away from me. I will be so careful. But if he left me, I should die. Please, please, sir, be good to us, to Larry and me. What is Keith doing, Wanda? We've heard nothing for five days. He's usually so... so prompt. I couldn't stay locked up in my rooms forever. I had to come out tonight. I... I had to see you. There's been nothing in the papers, nothing from Keith. I can't stand this much longer. I've paid to the Virgin. Larry, she will help us. You don't really believe that, do you? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, Larry, I do. I wish I could. Wish I could believe in anything. Oh, I hate this world. Hate its savageness, its ugliness. I hate Keith's world, all righteousness and smugness and success. We don't belong anywhere, Wanda. We're no good, you and I. We're weak, we're soft. Better dead than alive. No, no, Larry. Please don't be so unhappy. I can't bear to see you so hopeless in the heart. Something will... Be quiet. Maybe it's your brother. No. 
I gave him the keys. It might as well go. Keith! Barry, I told you to stay at home. I went to your rooms, you weren't there. I might have known you wouldn't have the strength to stay away from here. I couldn't help it, Keith. I couldn't stay alone any longer. I had to see her. Well, you're lucky. They've made an arrest. They've what? I've just come from the courts. It'll be in the papers tonight. They've arrested a man named Anderson, a little yellow, ragged scarecrow. He's lame and half-starved. <laughs> they were fools to think he'd have had the strength. Arrested? But, but how, Keith? How? They... There's not nearly enough evidence to convict him. But it'll give us a breather. He apparently robbed the body. Yes, but he, don't you... He pawned a snake-shaped ring, and they identified this swollen by it. He's in no danger. They always get the wrong man first. It'll do him no harm to be locked up for a spell. In the meantime, you've got to get out of England. No, but I can't no, be quiet, no, 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 you? There's a boat from the Argentine tomorrow. I'll get you a ticket, Larry, and some money. Both of us? You can't go together. She can go on the next boat. No, Keith. What do you mean, no? I can't go, that's what I mean. Not while there's a possibility of this man being charged with murder. Good grief, Larry, don't be an idiot. I'm a lawyer. I know there's not nearly enough evidence. No jury would convict, and if they did, no judge would hang. Besides, a ghoul who can rob a dead body ought to be in prison. No, Keith, I've got to see it through. Yes, Larry, you must. I've had about enough of you, Larry. Can you possibly imagine what I've been through in the last five days? My own brother, my own brother, Lawrence Sterrant, a murderer. Do you know what this will do to me? It'll be the end of everything. Everything I've worked for. For, for 20 years, I've slaved and studied and worked. And I'm not going to see the whole thing smashed up because you're a weak, worthless sham of a man that hasn't enough backbone to... I won't let you. You understand? I won't let you. Well? I don't want the money, Keith. Or the ticket. you better go. Now, look here, Larry. You're in no position to argue. You're in grave danger of ending up on the gallows. Get on that boat tomorrow, and I promise you she'll join you within a month. No. It'll be at least five months until he comes up for trial. You can't possibly live like this for five months, slinking around street corners at night. You can't stand it, neither can I. I can stand it. I'm not going to stay here and argue, Larry. This is your last chance. You'd better go, Keith. Can't you do something with him? But he's right, sir. This poor little man, Anderson. Yes, Larry, you have to see it through. Very well. Then there's nothing more to be said. I wash my hands of the whole affair. Good night. You're right, Larry. You are right. Do not be afraid, my dearest. That poor little lame scarecrow. Locked up because of me. Locked up like an animal in a cage. Wondering how. Wondering how this could happen to him. Larry. You're not going to... To give yourself up. I don't know. I... I cannot live if you are not with me, Larry. Yes, yes, you can. No, I'm not like you Englishmen. I'm different. Oh, what, of course. Of course you are. I do not care for fine clothes, for excitement. I do not care for much money. I care for you. I've been hungry before. I can be hungry again. But I cannot live without you, Larry. Oh, Wanda, Wanda, I love you. If I only had the courage to do what I ought to do. If I only had the courage. Yes, Holly. They're going to hang Anderson, sir. They found him guilty of Wallen's murder. They're going to hang him, sir. When did you learn this? Just now, sir. It's in the paper this morning. Didn't you know, sir? No, I... 
I've been so busy, I didn't know. Oh, it's a sad business, sir. Larry wouldn't be fool enough to go and confess to go and blab to the police. I... Holly, get your coat on quickly. Yes, sir. We've got to get to Larry before he makes a fool of himself. <laughs> Larry, it's I, Keith. If they're not here, sir, where would they be? I, I don't know. Here, open the door. Keys, sir? Yes, Larry gave them to me months ago. Go on, open the door. Oh, merciful heavens, Mr. Tarrant. Look! Keep quiet, you idiot. Keep quiet and shut the door. Sir, they're, they're dead, sir. That's what he bought in the chemist's shop. Look, here's the little blue box. Of all the ridiculous, insane things to do, how could they do this to me? Don't touch them, Holly, don't touch them. Here's a note, sir. Let me see it. I, Lawrence Darrant, about to die by my own hand, confess that I deliberately and with premeditation strangled and killed a man known as Patrick Wallen on the night of... Holly, quickly, we've got to get out of here. But, but Mr. Stand there staring at the man, they're dead, both of them, too weak and stupid to live. Oh, Mr. Come Darrant. on, we've got to get out of here. And we've never been here, do you understand? Oh, we've never been here. <laughs> Mr. Darren, sir. Well, Holly, what is it? I'm sorry to mention it again, sir, but time's getting short. I know that Holly, you... stop it, stop it. I'm sick of your tawdry emotionalism day after day, week after week. But, sir, I thought that you... You were... thought? What do you think I've been doing? Night after night, sitting here, I look into the flames and I see a street filled with people all staring at me. Brother of well-known KC, guilty of Wallen murder... What am I supposed to do? Weaken and go to the police? You want to let me lose that flood of foulness? But, sir, Christmas is over. It's New Year's Day tomorrow. You've so little time, sir. They're hanging Anderson on January the 14th. Don't you think I know that? Stop it, Hawley, stop it, stop it! Oh, Mr. Darren, sir, please. Leave it with me, Hawley, leave it with me. Don't talk about it anymore. Leave it with me. Oh, thank you, sir, thank you. I knew you couldn't be your father's son and not do something. Please, Holly. Let me alone now. Good morning, Mr. Darrant. What are you doing up so early? This is the day, sir. This is the day. I know it's the day. They're hanging them at five o'clock this morning and you can't sleep. Mr. Darrant, you've got to telephone the prison. You've still got Mr. Larry's letter, haven't you? Yes. Yes, I have. It's here on my desk. There's nothing left out. It's very clear. Even to the addresses of people who could identify the girl as having once been Wallam's wife. You haven't much more time, sir. I called the prison last night just to see how long it would take. They have a telephone right beside the gallows, just for last-minute things like this. Oh, let me get them for you, Mr. Darren. Holly, put that phone I, down. Put I, it down, I say. Holly, I've decided not to smirch the reputation of my dead brother or my dead mother. Not because of some little sewer rat that, that isn't worth saving, that's better off dead anyway. Larry's suicide with that woman was bad enough as it was. It involved me in no way, except as a mourner. But now, if I let this confession reach the authorities, I could never escape the gravest suspicion that I had known of the whole affair for the past three months. I'd have to go into court. I'd be recognized by that policeman. Who would believe in the mere coincidence of such a visit on the part of the murderer's brother? But, sir, you can't let an innocent man... Be quiet, but... Holly. Nothing could prevent this thing from ringing to the housetops. Let him hang. Yes, I can say it. Let him hang. I will not, by my own action, topple myself into the gutter. Oh, please, Mr. Depp, don't do that. 
don't. Oh, you Mr. see how quickly it burns, Hawley? Poor Larry's confession. Poor, stupid, silly Larry. He died for nothing. He had no will, no purpose. He and that girl might now have been at the other side of the world, but no. They have to take poison. Fools. Weaklings. A little conscience, a little remorse. What's that compared to, to living? A man must walk firmly, Hawley. Hold to his purpose. He must go on. And up. You shouldn't have burned that confession, Mr. Darren. Don't be impudent, Hawley. You know, of course, that if you went to the police now, you'd sound like a fool. You haven't a shred of evidence. Not a shred. And I'd be forced to bring up all sorts of counter-charges. How surly you are, how you dislike me, how you'd stolen on several occasions that I'd overlooked. Oh, no, Hawley. You'll keep quiet. Quiet. Perhaps I shall. Because they wouldn't believe me. But I won't be staying on here, Mr. Darrant. You'll stay until the end of the month, if you expect to be paid. No, Mr. Darrant. I'm leaving. By destroying Mr. Larry's confession, you've become a murderer. You've murdered a man. I won't work for a murderer. Five o'clock. Oh, Mr. Darrant. Oh, Mr. Darrant, sir. Don't you realize that you're guilty, too? Don't you realize that, sir? It's over. Uh, it's over. And you're a murderer. A murderer. I? A murderer? He's right. That's what I am. A murderer. Murderer. just heard The First and the Last by John Galsworthy. The production was directed by Harry W. Junkin and starred John Stanley as Keith, Ian Martin as Larry. Other players included Roy Irving, Lotta Stavisky, and Eugene Francis. The music was composed and conducted by Dr. Roy Shield. Tonight's story was prepared for radio by Nelson Olmsted. Radio City Playhouse is supervised for the National Broadcasting Company by Richard P. McDonough. This is Harry Junkin again. Next week, something of a tour de force for two actors, John Larkin and Bernard Grant. In my opinion, two of the most talented actors in radio today. The play is entitled The Door. Mr. Larkin portrays a criminal, Mr. Grant an Episcopal chaplain. We think you'll find it an exciting broadcast. Good night, everybody. Bob Warren speaking. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.